Hayya alal falah Hayya alal falah Allah إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته حق تقاته ولا تبوتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعله إوجا الحمد لله رب العالمين all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. All praise is due to Allah, who has revealed the scripture unto his servant and has made no crookedness therein. All praise is due to Allah, who has guided us to this path, and we would not have been able to guide ourselves had not Allah chosen to guide us. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us tremendously. He's blessed us to see this day. He's blessed us to gather in peace, safety and security, by His will. He's blessed us to be able to come here with rare exception, if no exception, with full stomachs, healthy bodies, Alhamdulillah. So we praise Allah for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He gives extremely glad tidings to the believers. Many different hadith, but we just want to relate one. So He says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٌ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءُ شَكَرَ فَكَانَتْ خَيْرًا لَهُ 
وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءُ صَبَرًا فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ لا إله إلا الله So he says that amazing is the affair of the believer. His affair, all of it is good. It's all good for the believer. And he said, and that is not for anyone except the believer. Well, they said, ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ if he's, a, if he's touched by some good fortune, by some blessing, he gives thanks, and that is best for him. And if he is afflicted with some calamity, or setback, or difficulty, however we choose to translate at dara, then he patiently forges on, and that is best for him. It's all good. A lot of people look at the situation descending upon this country since the elections last Tuesday. And they see nothing but bad. They see nothing but doom and gloom. Some people are extremely happy, on the other hand. But the believer understands if good comes out of this situation, it's an opportunity, it's an invitation rather, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that good. And the believer understands if some difficulty, some trials, tribulation, hardship comes out of the situation, it's an invitation to patiently persevere. And in patiently persevering, understanding that Allah Ta'ala will be with us. Inna Allah ma'as-sabirin. Inna Allah ma'as-sabirin. Allah is with those who patiently persevere. Allah is with those who patiently endure difficulties. They don't become angry with their Lord. They don't question their, uh, their Lord. They, their faith doesn't waver. In fact, if they're... If they're Confidence in their Lord is true, their faith increases. Allah Ta'ala describes the first community of Muslims at a time similar to the time we might feel we find ourselves in. When the, the Muslims had gone out to Uhud and they were on the verge of victory. And the, the victory was so imminent, they began the mopping up operations. Clean up the battlefield. And then uh, we all know the story, Khalid bin al-Walid led his troops around the Muslim flanks. And then they wreaked havoc upon the Muslim ranks. And it was a devastating setback after the victory at that. And then the Muslims, they limped back into Medina. Seventy-two were dead. Many more scores were wounded. The Prophet wasallam himself was wounded. They go back in that condition. The hypocrites are ridiculing them. Because they didn't want the Prophet wasallam to be invited into the city. So now they're ridiculing the Muslims. So it's not only a physical setback, it's a psychological setback. It's a crushing setback. And then they hear that the Quraysh are marching on Medina to finish off the Muslims. Say, so, well, we defeated them on the battlefield, now we're going to go into their home. And we're going to finish them off. Allah Ta'ala he mentions or relates uh, some verses in the Quran around these, these occurrences. So he says, <laughs> Those whom the people said that all the people, your enemies, they're gathering against you. Fear them. Fakhshawhum. Fear them. It only increased their faith. And they said, Allah suffices us. What an excellent one to depute. 
and trust our affair to them. How did their faith increase? They're being told these people that just defeated you on the battlefield, now they're descending on your city to finish you off. And the hypocrites are ridiculing them. Their faith increased because they realized we have no one to help us except the law. And when they realize there's no one to help them except the law, their faith was qualified by a key ingredient that's necessary for true faith. And that ingredient is called ikhlas, sincerity. So they didn't have faith that, okay, the Quraysh, they're going back. So they're going to leave us alone. No, we can't check that box. They didn't have any faith that the hypocrites were maybe they're neutral. They're not really against us. And they're clapping. Yeah, come on. Come get them. Can't check that box. They didn't have any alliances with the neighboring tribes. Can't check that box. So they realized at that point, the only box we can check is the one next to the great name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only box we can check. And so at that point, they had sincerity. And when they were sincere, their faith increased. الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمْعُ لَكُمْ فَاخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادُهُمْ إِمَانًا and they said, Allah suffices us. We don't need anyone except Allah. Allah suffices us. And alhamdulillah, they, they continue to seek out allies and to seek worldly sources of strength and support because we've been ordered to do that. But they, they, they were prepared to face the reality that if no one is with us, if no one can help us, help us, if no one can assist us, we have Allah and Allah suffices us. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. And then so what happened? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hearing this, he didn't feel sorry for them, for his followers and the predicament they were in. He didn't say, well, let's just barricade ourselves here in the city and hope for the best. He didn't say, well, let's flee in the opposite direction and hope they can't catch up with us. He said, we're mobilizing to go meet them. We're going to march out to meet them. Some of them were so bad off, they had to be physically picked up to place, be placed on their mountain. Some of them, they didn't have any mount to ride on. And so they limped out towards the direction of their enemies. Then what happened? When the Quraysh heard that the Muslims were mobilizing to come meet them, they realized they only had got the victory because they caught a break. That the Muslims let their guard down and thought the battle was over and started cleaning up and mopping up the battlefield and then call it surprised them. Were it not for that, they realized we would have been in big, big trouble. So when they heard the Muslims are coming out to meet them, they turned around and they went back to Mecca. And the Prophet وسلم, and his companions, they set camp at a place called Hamra al-Asad. And they enjoyed each other's company and they, they prayed and they regrouped and they sang. They used to sing in those days. Right, he came into the city. They sang. And they celebrated. And the psychological effects of the defeat they had previously suffered were removed from them. So what's the point, brothers and sisters? We're not engaged in any physical battle. We're engaged in a battle of ideas. We're engaged in a psychological battle. And in this battle, we cannot run from that 
which is confronting us, we have to do like the Prophet did and the believers did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have to run to it. We have to confront it, we have to take it on. And if we do that, our faith will be increased. If we do that, we'll find miraculous things happening. So Allah Ta'ala says, Hasbunallahu wa ni'man wa kir fanqalabu bi ni'matin min Allah wa fadlin lam yamsasum su wa tab'u ridwan Allah wallahu hu fadlin azim. And he said that they left that place fanqalabu bi with the graces of Allah and with the, with the blessings of Allah and with His grace, no evil touched them. Lam yamsasum su wa tab'u ridwan Allah and they attain the pleasure of Allah. Wallahu hu fadlan azim. And Allah is most expansive in His grace. Then Allah Ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا ذَانِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ يُقَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءً فَلَا تَخَافُوهُ مَقَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ He said, that is Satan. He desires to instill the fear of his dupes into you. Fear them not, rather fear me if indeed you are Muslims. If indeed you are believers, excuse me. In kuntum mu'minin. He said all of this agitation, all of these desires to cast you into fear. That Satan. He wants to instill the fear of his dupes into you. فَلَا تَخَافُوهُ وَخَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Don't fear them. Fear me if indeed you are believers. Now we know there's realities people are confronting. We know that people, Muslims, they don't live in a place like Oakland, California. Where you know, people love Muslims, generally. I'm sure you have some haters out there. You can walk the streets without looking over your shoulder. But there are people, they're the only Muslim family in town, in some places that, that they might live. And their children might be the only Muslims in the school. And this atmosphere of hate, uh, of hatred, and this atmosphere of anti-Muslim uh, propaganda creates fearful situations. So we're not trying to dismiss the validity of the forces that might instill fear in them. The challenge is to forge on despite the fear. The challenge is to forge on despite the fear. The challenge is to hold one's head up confident that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta is with one. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one's protector. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us strength from, from avenues and vistas we could never imagine. When the companions of the cave, and a lot of the bullying, is, is, it happens to the teenagers, it happens to children in school. Allah relates the story of a group of children in the Qur'an, the companions of the cave. He says, They were young people, fitzya, who believed in their Lord and we increased them in guidance. And then Allah says, And they stood up. He said, we strengthened their hearts. When they stood up and they said, our Lord is the Lord of the heavens and earth. We'll, have no, we'll call on no God besides Him. Were we to do so, we would have gone beyond all acceptable limits. So they stood up despite the difficulty. They were surrounded by disbelief. They were surrounded by the antagonistic forces of an empire, the Roman Empire. Despite that, they stood up and they manifested their faith. And they believed firmly in their Lord. And Allah says, He strengthened their hearts. 
Brothers and sisters, despite the difficulties, despite the challenges, despite the, the, fear, uh, the fearful circumstances, you might find yourself in stand up. Stand up. And Allah will strengthen you. Allah Ta'ala will strengthen your heart. Allah Ta'ala will, will edify you as He edified those young people. Allah Ta'ala will extend His grace to you as He extended it to that first community. That doesn't mean there are not difficult times ahead. We look at the election results. We say, uh, well, maybe the president-elect, maybe he's a racist, maybe he's not a racist. Maybe he'll do the right thing. Maybe he really meant what he said in his uh, victory speech. And then we see he starts appointing racists, even people who might be described as fascists, or people who hate Islam to the core of their being, like some of these characters. And then those that wavy, that wavering starts to disappear. It doesn't matter, brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter what anyone else does. What, what matters is what we do. Because Yom al Qiyamah, each and every one of us is going to stand before our Lord alone. And we're going to have to account for what we did alone. And we're going to answer as to how we dealt with and responded to the challenges and the tests that we were confronted with in this world alone. And so it matters what we do as individuals. It matters the stands that we take. It matters how, how well we're able to come together to support each other, to strengthen each other. It matters what kind of example we will be for other people who are affected in far worse ways than the Muslims. It troubles me. It troubles me. When I hear Muslims over the course of the last week asking, well, are, are we going to be put in concentration camp? when hundreds of thousands of people right now are in concentration camps called ICE detention centers. And the same one who's worried that it might happen to them has nothing to say in defense of those who it has happened to. That shouldn't be how Muslim functions. As long as hunky-dory as long as I can keep making my money and live a nice, cushy existence, I'm not concerned about people who are suffering the things that tomorrow I fear will I might suffer. Maybe the Klan and the Aryan nation and the skinheads and the who knows what, they'll, they'll start shooting us down in the streets. But every 28 hours, there's a young African-American Largely males, but including females, who are shot down in the streets. Where's the concern for those lives? We, we, have, to, we have to be bigger than what the circumstances are pushing us towards. The circumstances are pushing us towards fear. We have to rise above our fear. And if we don't rise above our fears, then we might cut a deal. Just shut up. And don't complain about what, what is happening to you or what's happening to other people and we'll let you continue to make your money. Just be quiet and don't dissent and don't protest and don't object. We should say, no, I'm not afraid and because I'm not afraid, I'm not amenable to any deal. 
I'm not amenable to any deal. And I don't want a deal that's going to be a Muslim deal if it's not also a Mexican deal. It's an African American deal. And it's a poor, distant white, disenfranchised white deal. Because if you're going to villainize all of us, demonize all of us, criminalize all of us, then we're going to stand as one marginalized community. And we're not going back to slavery. We're not going back to a worse Jim Crow than the one we're in anyway. We're not going backwards. We're going to forge ahead. We're going to forge ahead. We're not leaving the country. Rip the passport up. So it's time to get real with ourselves, brothers and sisters. Like, we tell all the stories. We got all the stories. Right? When Tariq bin Ziyad, when they went into Andalusia, they burned the ships because they realized they weren't going back. You burn your ship. Or don't tell that story. Because we're not going back. I'm not going back to Pakistan. I'm not from Pakistan. I'm from here. I'm not going back to Egypt. I'm not going back to India. Because I came here as a law-abiding citizen, I pay my taxes, I contribute to the well-being of this country, I serve the sick, I feed the poor, I assist the, the, the downtrodden, I have made an investment, and I'm not going anywhere. And if anyone has a problem with that, they can go somewhere. Seriously. Anyone has a problem with that, they can go somewhere. It's, it's, we, have, we, 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 have to, we have to get real with ourselves. We have to get real, brothers and sisters. And we have to be serious about our religion, about our deen. Because the deen will give us something, it will connect us to a law. It will connect us to a law. It will unify us with people who don't look like us. Because Islam never concerned itself with, with, with color, with race, with ethnicity. It acknowledges national pride. El Iman Yemeni, Wal Hikmatu Yemeniya. Faith is Yemeni. Wisdom is Yemeni. And Adhan al Habasha. The Adhan is for the people of Ethiopia. When Tatawalla yastabdil qawman ghayrakum thumma la yakunu amthalakum. Amthalakum. Huwa wa qawmuhu. Wa wad'a yadhu al-sharif ala kathfi Salman al-Farisi. Salman, the Persians. So Islam recognizes natural وَجَعَنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا We made you into nations and tribes. We ta'arufu that you can recognize in each other the creative power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that you might fight each other. Not that you can put up these and so Islam recognizes nation but not nationalism. Tribes but not tribalism. And this is our message to the world, because we see the emergence of American tribalism. American tribalism. And it's our responsibility to redefine the tribe. Some people say the tribe, tribe Betty America, is white America. And when they say make America great again, some of them, not all of them, as the signs after the election say, make America white again. It's our responsibility to say, you know, that's an interesting twist on history. But when this country was founded, there were three peoples here. There were you European settlers, 
There were the slaves that you brought with you, and there were the native people, and the native people and the slaves were the majority. And Benny and Rika is all of us. Benny and Rika is all of us. And the country will never be great as long as it's filled with hate. Hatred of this one, that one, or the other. It will only be great when it recognizes the reality that existed at the time of its founding. And that's the foundation for eradicating all of this hatred, all of this, of this violence. That's the foundation. It's our responsibility. Or else when we read the Quran and Allah tells us that he made us in the nations and tribes that we can recognize each other. And the best of you is the one most mindful of Allah, most dutiful to Almighty God. Not the one who's this or that color, white, red, brown, black, yellow, or whatever. The best of you is the one who's most mindful of his or her duty to God. There's no racial foundation for any virtue, for any people, based on the Quranic view of humanity. That's our responsibility to tell the people, and to inform the people, and to make a reality in our lives, and in our community, in our time. Or else we're going to keep going through this, this nonsense. But you know what? Sometimes you have to have an attitude. Or you get bullied. And crushed. And trampled on. And all of us, being faithful Americans, you should tell all and sundry, don't tread on me. <coughs> Unfortunately, there are some people who, who are, whose hearts are not close to the Qur'an, given to despair. And Allah tells us in the Qur'an, Only a disbelieving people despair of Allah's mercy. Only a disbelieving people despair of Allah's mercy. Allah says we're going to be tested. Some people act like and haven't even been tested yet. It's the prospect of the test. Act like, like Allah says in the Quran, there's a surah, surah, good ship lollipop. <laughs> you know, surah, yani, uh, rose garden. Those are chapters in the Quran. Sorry. Allah never promised us a rose garden. Allah didn't say you're going to sail on the good ship lollipop. He says you're going to be tested. And He says it emphatically. Surely we're going to test you with something of fear and hunger and loss of, of, of wealth and lives and fruits. Give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. That's where we started. Ajaman the Amrin Mu'min. And Asabat who Dara'u. Sabara fakanat khayran lah. 
تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا The one who created death and life to test you which of you are best indeed. ألف نام ميم أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون The people think they'll be left alone merely saying we believe and not be tested وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مَنْ قَبْلِهَمْ We tested those who preceded them فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ In order that Allah would show which of them are truthful and which of them are liars This is, this is the Quranic message. I don't know what some folks out there have been reading to be so uh, disappointed that the good ship Lollipop ran into a reef. <laughs> this is the Quran. And then Allah says, What Bashir is sobbing, give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. لَتُبْلَوُنَّ فِي أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ وَلَتَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذًا كَثِيرًا وَانْتَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Surely you're going to be tested in your wealth and your lives and you're going to hear from those given the scripture before you and from the idolaters much abuse. Not all of them, from some of them. Not a little bit of abuse, much abuse. And so what's the program? When tasbiru, if you patiently persevere. وَتَتَّقُوا And you remain mindful of Allah, فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مَنْ عَزْمِهُ مُورَ That is resolving your purpose. Brothers and sisters, it's good. Some people say, you know, it's the end, end of the line. It's all over. There it is. I read the hadith. خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي the best generation is my generation and then it decreases from there. The Prophet said that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he also said, Man yuridi Allahu anhu. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَكِّرُ فِي الدِّينِ وَإِنَّمَا أَنَا قَاسِمْ وَاللَّهُ عَزْوَ وَجَلِّ يُعْطِي وَلَنْ تَزَالَ طَائِفَةٌ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ قَائِمَةً بِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ لَا يُدُرُّهُمْ مَنْ خَلَّفَهُمْ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ أَمْرُ الله. The one Allah wants good for, He gives them a sound understanding of the religion. Rather, I dispense the message and it's Allah who gives understanding. And there will always be a group from my ummah who establish their affair on the commandment of Allah. They will not be harmed by those who oppose them until the command of Allah comes. That meaning, Yom al and Some say Dajjal, and some say the wind that will blow at the end of time, taking the souls of the believers. In any case, we still got a ways to go. And there will be good. مثل الأمة مثل أمتي مثل المطر لا يدرى الخير في أوله وآخره The likeness of my, of my community عن أنس بن مالك as أنس ولي The likeness of my community is like rain. You don't know if the benefit is in the first of the rain or the last of the rain. في سيرة ابن هشام قال هو روى في بلاية بكى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالوا ما يبكيك يا رسول الله قال اشتقت اخواني اولسنا اولسنا اخوانك اخوانك يا رسول الله لا انتم اصحابي إخواني قوم يأتوا من بعدي يؤمنون بي ولا يروني. He said, I'm longing. The Prophet was crying, صلى الله عليه وسلم. And they said, what's, what's causing you to cry, O Messenger of Allah? He said, I'm longing for my brothers. They said, are we not your brothers, O Messenger of Allah? He said, no. You're my companions. My brothers and sisters are people who will come after me believing in me heaven never seen
Isn't that sufficient? <clears throat> Doesn't that suffice? Isn't that enough to live for? إن الله على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين وكونوا مع الصادقين اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا لا تزك قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحبنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا فر علينا الصبر واثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا فر علينا الصبر واثبت أقدامنا وتوفنا المسلمين واعف عنا وافج لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الحم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وكهر الرجال اللهم اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تعول به بيننا وبين معاصي ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مشائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأقصارنا وقواتنا ما أحيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين وعف عنا وفعنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتائد القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمغري والبعي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أكم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله